Buenos días, buenos días. Hoy es martes, and we are on a Tuesday, and I'm Pastor Jim Simbola. I'm so happy that I can talk to you and read from God's Word. Um, are you enjoying these? I hope, I pray, I trust, because I'm doing these, prepare for them, pray over them. Uh, pray about them, that it might be a blessing to you. Yeah, but you don't know who I am, and I don't go to your church. Well, I don't care. If you're a Christian, you're my brother or sister. We're going to spend eternity together. No, but I'm in a different denomination. I don't even believe like you do on certain things. I still don't care. I love you with the love of the Lord. And guess what? If I can be an encouragement to you, God is watching and he knows I'm not doing this for money, and he'll bless me and the church I pastor because we're trying to be a blessing to other Christians. And you could do the same. Just be a blessing to someone today. Take him out for lunch. Buy him coffee. Text him with a good message. Bring hope to someone who's hopeless. We're reading in, uh, we're re uh, reading in Galatians 5, the works of the flesh, verse 21. This is what the sarks, the fallen nature in all of us. Remember, when you're saved, God does not eradicate the fallen nature. People who say that are whistling in the dark, in my judgment, because why would the Lord say what he says here in Galatians? For the spirit fights against the sarks, the sark fights against the spirit, and they are totally opposed to each other. He's writing that to Christians. That must mean something, and just take the literal obvious meaning of it. And we all know that. We all know that, that, that even though our mind, informed by truth, knows that a certain path is the best one to follow, does that automatically we do it? What? No. Why? Because there's other voices in there, and they're not demons saying, don't do that. What do you mean a diet to get healthy? What do you mean listen to the warning of a doctor? No. Those Oreos are calling. They have a voice. Come on, we all know that's true. Banana cream pie. No, banana pudding. Better than banana cream pie to me. So now what else does this flesh, this fallen nature in Jim Simbola produce if, if I'm not walking in the spirit? And that's the choice. Either guided by the spirit or guided by uh, and influenced by the flesh. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. That's the old life for some of us. Notice that not everyone practices all of these, but certain areas of the sarks are developed as we grow up, depending on a lot of things. And, you know, my dad took one drink in his 40s, and 22 years later, he was still an alcoholic from one drink at an office party. Drunkenness. That's how his fallen nature, and you think he wanted it? Come on. He had the guy that dragged me to church. He loved my mother, but he would beat her when he got drunk, and I had to defend her best I could got old enough where I could, strong enough to hold them back. But I knew about the sarks and the compulsive nature of that. I'm telling you, he couldn't walk by a liquor store on Bedford Avenue between Parkside and Winthrop if his life depended on it. He couldn't walk by it. But then would cry to me after he saw the damage, he'd do, Jim, you know, I love your mother and I love you. And I'm not going to say he didn't, but... See, there's a compulsive nature to self-gratification. It can be pornography. It can be immorality. It can be lying. It can be temper tantrums. It can be covetousness. It can be racial prejudice. It can be hate. It's compulsive. And the only thing that can stop it is the Spirit of God dwelling in us. As we live control by, as, we, as to say it this way, by another person. That's what Paul meant when he said, not I, but Christ dwelleth in me. So, we now have 
drunkenness, orgies, and the like, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. What's he saying? That one of the proofs of being born again, you know, faith without works is dead. One of the proofs of that is that a person who's been born again has the Holy Spirit living in them. They cannot live a lifestyle of unrepentant, practicing sin. Impossible. It's impossible. They might battle with it, but they're miserable. There's nothing more miserable on the face of the earth than a Christian who's living compromised life, dominated by the flesh. Nothing more miserable, because they know better. Uh, an unbeliever is like, hey, dude, what's wrong with you? That's the way I choose to live. Don't be a hater. Live your life. You want to go to church and all that? Be a holy roller. Go for it. But don't bother with me, and I don't want to hear about the Bible. By the way, I just heard before coming over here about some, you know, contemporary church conference where we've so distorted now the gospel. One of the questions asked at it of well-known ministers was, what is sin? You know, that's a very deep question, very hard question. People have battled, these are the answers. People have debated that and wondered, and it's really, it just, you see, we're all broken and we're all, see, the victim theology. What sin is, is a violation breaking of God's law, and he's the lawgiver and he's the judge. And the sin comes from the outworking of the flesh in all of us. But when you become a Christian, you can't live that way. No. No, no, no. No. A real, you can go to church. Yeah. You can try to live a better life. You can agree with certain parts of the Bible. But you can't live in that. No, no. Impossible. Impossible. Remember what we learned in 1 John? The person who says he knows God and lives in darkness. He, don't, he says he knows the light, but he lives in darkness. He's a liar. The truth is not in him. How about this one? Anyone says he loves God and hates his brother because they disagree with them, different race, whatever. He's a liar too. That's what God said, not me. So let, let, let this thing search all of us, starting with me. Is there something that God has a dispute with me about? You got to check that every day got to get our hearts right with God and stay in the light, even as he is in the light. Then we enjoy all the benefits of our salvation. Love, joy, peace, meekness. And we're not afraid of dying because we know Jesus is our Savior. See you tomorrow. Amen.